one of those uh, anti-Sicilian mm -hmm. uh, positions. Quite modern right, right. right now. R really, uh, where the opening circus is going to leave us in the future. And I mean, on we had the Twitter question the other day, which was like, what is chess going to be like in 50 years? And I said, Fisher Random. And <laughs> no, 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 it's not Fisher agree. Random, it's something else. And well, yeah, take a look at this position. I mean, what has White done to his pawn structure? Put them all on light squares, e4 and c4, and he's put his bishop on a4. I mean, some of the old classical uh, chess players are rolling over in their <laughs> grave and saying, you know, what is modern chess? Yeah, but Arthur Confusing. has Komodo behind him, Stockfish, right? probably a lot, of, a lot of help from these engines. All right, but I, I interrupted you because you were going to show us a position that you have in front I'm of you. I'm looking at the juniors. Yes. Mm -hmm. Because there's some crazy stuff going on in this game of uh, Xu versus uh, Josiah Stearman. And uh, take a look at these imbalances in the position. Bishop 2f4, g5. Whoa, whoa, what, 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 what? <laughs> Why are you doing this? Why did you do that? <laughs> Why are you opening up your Why king? Why are you doing this? Uh, I thought black was getting ready on the queen side. Yeah, right, That's exactly, B5, right? Exactly. <laughs> play B5, fake. not G5. Don't you play fake, on both sides, right? Fake, fake this out. <laughs> Red fake. And now he plays F5. What? Which the computer really hates. It says, take on F5, followed by rook to E1. You're going to have E5 as a weakness, your king is in deep, deep trouble, and it right. doesn't matter if you manage to maybe get a pawn on d3. That's actually going to help me, because it's going to open all okay. the lines. Look at your pieces. They're just not playing for anything coordinated right now. What is the knight on c7 combining in terms of ideas with? Well, it was b5. You cannot do that anymore, right? Mm -hmm. It's too late. Mm -hmm. You opened up uh, both fronts. You cannot do that from a strategic point and a tactical point of view. He plays f5, he doesn't take on f5, he plays the move h4, Arthur, that is, but this is a mistake. Nevertheless, it's not easy to take advantage of. It's not easy from a practical perspective to take advantage of. Because the best move in the position is actually to close things up with the move f4. What's wow. the most natural? g4, right? Right. At least to my eyes, g4 is the most natural. The problem is after knight to e5, this is problematic. Yeah. This is really problematic because this bishop on h2 is not getting closed up anymore, right? Yeah. You don't have ideas of f4 anymore because you simply don't have enough defenders of that pawn. So you're in trouble. Strategic, forget about it. Do not give that bishop, right? Right. You give the g7 bishop away, that's it. Game over. I mean, your king is never going to recover. So don't do that, but what else? You don't have any other counter chance uh, in the position anymore. At this point, Josiah needs to start understanding that you need to do something strategically um, fast. And th th this is the move F4, urgent. He needs mm -hmm. to have some urgency to uh, create some sort of uh, stable position in the center, and this is what he has to do. Forget about taking back on G5. Just go E5. Mm -hmm. Forget about taking back on H6, because if you take, you lose the pawn on E5. Right. Play the move Bishop F6. You will recapture this pawn at some point. The bishop on h2 is in big, big trouble. Right. I'm if you light. do go g3 and try to open it up, you're weakening the light yes, squares around your king. And you no longer have a light square bishop. So I will be able to easily take advantage of that. Bishop to g4, things of that nature, it's not looking good for white. So the bishop on h2, after this sequence of moves, is just simply uh, dead. And I'm going to take my time. I'm going to go rook to g8, queen to e8, queen to g6, set up things on the g file. Keep the pawn on h6. In fact, it protects my king right now, and I will have a better position. At least, also, I have a plan right now, right? I know what I'm playing for. White doesn't really know anymore what he's playing for. He has a couple of pawns up, but they're not really doing much. So this is the key sequence that right now Josiah has to find or has to understand that this is the way to go. Otherwise, he's strategically busted. Let's see what he does. Thank you for that, Christian. That Studio with Christian. Over to you, Christian. That's a wild game, but we had another completely wild game. Uh, Josiah, first of all, congratulations. Big victory for your first victory at the Juniors competition. First time you were actually participating. Tell us a bit about your story and uh, your first time here. Yeah, no, I got the wild card in my last year of eligibility, so I'm super stoked to be here. Um, you know, uh, been on a good run recently, so 
feeling good about my form. And one and a half out of three, not the best start. Yesterday's game was pretty devastating, but uh, glad to pick it up again in what was a pretty wild game. <laughs> Let's discuss this game because uh, the advantage was going back and forth every single move. This position, you decided to go and play G5. Yeah, so it was interesting here because I actually knew F6 was the best move. You did? Um, okay. Yeah, and I saw this. But uh, I honestly felt that... Uh, to try to go for E5? Yeah, to go for E5, because the problem is white starting knight E5, the pin on my rook is very annoying. Um, and yeah. so, yeah, I had calculated this, but I evaluated it as nearing a two-result game, actually, and I just really didn't want that. So I, ha I had the feeling that I needed to shake things up if you know I was kind of pushing a little bit, maybe too hard, but... And you did. Um, he had uh, an opportunity of potentially taking on f5, maybe this So if he have... takes and I go bishop f5? Probably just uh, rook e1. Really? Just give up the pawn like this huh. for compensation. Yeah, I had a feeling that maybe this was dynamically terrible for me, but <laughs> for some reason I was uh, optimistic. It's not easy to assess. Yeah. Right? I can't believe it's plus three. Like take it's and rook crazy. b6, something like that. It, not easy to assess. H4 makes a lot of sense, at least visually. And you found this idea, very nice idea of giving up a couple of pawns. Yeah, I was very happy with my, my find here. Oh, wow. And then this move oh rook to g8, <laughs> which allows knight takes f4. As well allows as also knight well, takes f4. So knight f4, I thought bishop g4. And then here, really? Yes, this was the big one. Okay, and, and I thought queen e5. Oh, then queen takes queen f4. Queen takes f4, yeah. yeah. No, because I had calculated bishop takes f4, which looks like it wins a piece, but now I go queen uh, to h... I was planning h5 because he can't take on c7 because I think I made him. Yeah. But, wow. And also, this is not easy to see um, and not easy to assess after f3. Yeah, no, I, in this moment, I was really holding my breath, like, <laughs> before all these sacrifices because there's, like, five different ways he can sacrifice exactly. the piece. Exactly, yeah. And, yeah. okay, I, I completely forgot about queen takes f4. That's we thought that this would be, at yeah, least so from a practical Yeah, so here I thought bishop g4. Oh, queen e3. Oof. Man. Yeah, no, I thought after bishop g4 he was forced to play like knight e1, and then I was going to play bishop g5, and I'm pretty sure that this, uh, yeah, that this is yeah, this is, is good. This is good Oof. for you. Man, I missed a lot of things then. <laughs> mm -hmm. Wild position, nonetheless. Not easy to calculate everything. Um, but <laughs> we were kind of getting lost here. We had no idea how to assess yeah, it. Yeah, I mean... Stopped using the engine, and we're like, okay, what in the world is happening? Yeah, after e5... I thought my bishop h8 move was... Or, okay, bishop g4, and then, okay. Oh, yes. yeah, bishop h8 is good, yeah. So. Yes, this was good. Yeah. This transition was good after that. I think I actually made a mistake and played rook takes h6. That was a bit hasty. b5 seems yeah. to have been the best move here. I was thinking about that, but then I was worried about knight e4, and maybe I'd take... Oh, oh right, bishop f3. Yeah. To be honest... Uh, in this position, he had like six minutes left, and he went up to go to the bathroom, and yeah. so I, I kind of blitzed out. <laughs> <laughs> That's a strategy I did not teach him. So. <laughs> that is I definitely bet. not something I can. And know. I knew his only move was rook queen g3. Um, after queen takes d5. No, no, no. After uh, after rook h6. Yes. So um, yeah, I was pretty surprised when he came back from the bathroom and blitzed out e7. So maybe it worked. What do you think he missed? Perhaps I, mean, what do you think? I think what he missed was queen, queen, queen b8, h5. queen h5, queen h8, and I'm defending the, the e8 winning square. Yeah, that's what so, we yeah. assumed as well. Yeah. Well, <laughs> maybe not the most precise, but still uh, an important victory for you. How are you feeling about your chances? What are your ambitions as a wild card going into this event? Um, I mean, I was looking for uh, first place. I'm kind of, uh, I saw Mishra's interview that second to tenth really doesn't mean anything. <laughs> and I wouldn't say I would go that far because I still have GM to make. Um, and so, you know, every point matters. But uh, definitely, you know, it's only three rounds in, so I still believe I have uh, some decent chances to, to take first place if I play well. So, yeah, definitely a lot of holes I have to patch up <laughs> <laughs> in this game. Well, go get some rest and get ready for uh, tomorrow's match. Yes, thank you, Christian. Uh, questions, I mean, this was such a complicated game. I did not understand anything <laughs> what was happening there. So many sacrifices. Uh, so maybe if he's still in the studio, he just is. a question. Yes. Yeah, uh, like h how did you feel about the two pawns in the center? Like, were you worried or were you just like, I'm fine, I'm going to survive with that piece there? 
Well, to be honest, I was like worried like the whole game until I mated him. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I kind of figured that with his low time, my bishop pair, especially here, I had a feeling that I had already taken over. Um, the only point where I was really worried was where all those sacrifices were happening. And I, exactly. Yeah, my intuition was right that it was bad, but uh, I guess uh, I got a little bit lucky. Well, well done. Congratulations. Absolutely. Thank Congratulations you. indeed. And I can't wait for your book, Practical <laughs> Chess Tips by Josiah. Make your moves when your opponent went to the bathroom, you know, pick up uh, some time on the clock. Some strategy there. Exactly. <laughs>